Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at some of the most common tour scams you may run into while traveling in the United States. Regardless of what you've seen in the media, in the United States is generally a really safe country to travel in. I'm actually making this video from a hotel room on a business trip, and I feel perfectly safe. Alright, one moment guys. Wow, the FBI! And what do I owe the pleasure? No, I had no idea. I had a thousand dollars in outstanding parking ticket. Okay, yes. I'll send that over in Bitcoin right away. Thanks. Phew. I'm glad I got that taken care of. Anyways, where was I? Oh, oh yeah, scams. I actually feel pretty bad for people who fall for scams. If you want to be scam proof like me, make sure you watch the entire video. Here we go. Number one, phone scams. If you live in the States, I'm sure you're already familiar with the robotic voice from FedEx needing to confirm your information to make a delivery. Or my personal favorite, congratulations, you won a free cruise to the Bahamas. I found the best response to this one is to let them go on for their whole spiel. It usually takes about 30 minutes and when they're done I say, oh sorry, I didn't have my hearing aids in. Can you please repeat that? It's really important to remember that to never give out your personal information over the phone and don't be afraid to hang up on someone. It's not rude when they're a scammer, just saying. A legitimate company will have ways to verify your identity before asking for payments or personal details. Once you recognize a phone scammer, go ahead, have a little fun with them. I suggest whispering into their phone so they turn their volume way up, then screaming as loud as you can. Yeah, I'm pretty petty. Number two, credit card skimming. Okay, number one, I would say, is always to make sure using a credit card instead of a debit card, although Dave Ramsey may not like it. Have you ever done something really stupid with money? Credit cards have a very useful purpose. We get it, Dave. You hate debt. If you're over 12, you should have raised your hand just then. But for the most part, you're not liable if your credit card is compromised. Unlike a debit card where you need to go through a whole investigation to prove the fraudulent charges, aren't you? Although you may not be responsible for paying back the lost funds with a credit card, who wants to go through a whole hassle of getting the card replaced? Oh and also redoing all those pre-authorized payments you have to set up. Updating your Netflix account with a remote control is like a 30 minute job. This is how you can avoid all of that. The most common way to get your credit card compromised is with a skimming device. The most common places for these skimming devices are in gas station pumps and outdoor ATMs. So before you swipe, make sure you inspect the credit card reader to see if there's anything unusual about it. Oh, and another common scam is that the grocery or convenience store clerk running your credit card through a second machine, usually below the counter. I don't care if she's a 90-year-old grandma checking her out at the Walgreens. If you see her take your card below the counter, it's on, like Donkey Kong. No, just kidding, please, no elderly abuse. Number three, taxi scams. Okay, we know this one is a common all over the world. Just last year, I got in a taxi in Costa Rica, and the driver forgot one of my bags in the trunk. Luckily, all he got away with was a bunch of well-used socks and underwear. And I was on my way home after a two-week trip. I think the smell he had to suffer. When he opened the bag was punishment enough. Full-on theft of your luggage is a lot less common in the United States, but taxi drivers will do other things, such as taking the long way to your destination. Hey, didn't we pass that KFC twice? This trick is particularly common in Las Vegas. This is why it's always a good idea to pull up Google Maps. Also, Uber is nice because you can preview the route. That reminds me, have you ever seen some of the passive aggressive battles between Uber drivers and cab drivers? It's like the modern day Hatfields and McCoys. Yeehaw. Number four, photography scams. I witnessed this one firsthand in New York City. Times Square to be precise. A group of young Korean students were struggling, trying to fit everyone in the frame for a selfie. Where's the damn selfie stick when you need it, right? When what appeared to be a very helpful young man offered to take a picture of them. What a nice guy. Boom, just like that, he took off with the phone never to be seen again. I tried to run after him, but I'm starting to think it, the thief was Usain Bolt with the speed he took off at. Or maybe I just lost a few steps with all my cheeseburger diet. Either way, Never, ever hand someone your phone. If you're desperate for a group picture, then generally you are safer if you ask someone to take it rather than going with someone who offers. As sad as that is, thieves aren't the only problem in Times Square. 
You know, all those cool people dressed up as superheroes? Yeah. They'll make it seem like it's no problem to get a picture with them, but the moment you do, they expect payment. To me, this is perfectly reasonable. I just wish there were more upfront about it. Number five, rental car damage. This one really bothers me. Here's what they do. They'll rent you a car with pre-existing damage. Maybe it's some minor scratches or dents. The problem is you just got off an eight hour red eye flight where a kid was kicking the back of your seat the whole time. So there you are, feeling more reassured than ever about your recent vasectomy, but also completely sleep deprived. When some guy with a cheap tie on asked you to examine the car for pre-existing damage. No wonder I missed the one quarter inch scratch on the rear fender. When you return to the car, they point out this damage and try to pin it on you. This happened to my friend but he got them back good. He ended up renting the same make and model of the car he owns and swapped it out his tires for the rental car's brand new tires. Perfect crime. The only way to really avoid this scam is to be really diligent when checking the vehicle. I find that taking a video that you can refer back to is a good idea. Number six, the fake parking attendant. This one is really only common in large cities. You park your car either in a parade or in the street, and someone will ask you for money to make sure it stays safe. Really, this is a thinly veiled threat because basically they're saying they will vandalize your car if you don't pay them the money. No way to really prevent this one, but you find this is happening to you a lot, maybe try visiting safer places. Canada's nice. Number seven, street baggers. Panhandlers have existed for a long time. But is it just me or are they getting a lot more aggressive these days? Lots of beggars have really good sob stories that can pull at your heartstrings, especially if you're sensitive like me. I can't even watch The Notebook anymore. We suggest offering them food or clothing instead of money. If they decline, they may not be in that much of a need of help. In fact, some studies show that the panhandler can make an average of $15 per hour. So before you part with your hard earned money, think back to the jobs you had to work that paid less than $15 per hour. Hey, there was this one lady in Calgary, after she was rested, they found out she was a millionaire. So just be careful, folks. Comment below how much your first job paid. I worked at a well-known donut shop that will remain nameless due to an ongoing legal suit, uh, but it rhymes with bunkin' phone nuts for $5.15 per hour. And get this, no free donuts. Thanks for watching, and come back for the next one.